I'm thrilled to be here. I would like to thank Sean and CC to inviting me. I'm thrilled to have been able to see Professor Saitovic, who I have known the books for some time, and it's the first time I see you personally. And also the presentations I have, have seen up to now have been thrilling, so I hope you will enjoy the, the material I'm going to show you. I'm going to read the presentation because uh, I'm Brazilian and the risk of improvising in English is too strong. Text and we have yes. Huh? Okay, let's go. Um, all right, sense and meaning body senses and language in a synesthetic key. Hmm. Um, okay. uh, being involved with the writings of uh, Merleau-Ponty for years, in 2010 I made a postdoc research get back, um, uh, effort focused on the relations between perception and language. Merleau-Ponty, as it is well known, ascribes absolute importance to the role of perception in producing the word of our experience. And this kind of quote is uh, familiar to people who read Merleau-Ponty. Um, does the question of how does the perceived word becomes spoken word uh, is inescapable. As Merleau-Ponty puts it, speech continues the work of perception without reducing itself to it. Uh, let's stay here for a while. Um, they say that emerged from this one year research, tries to summarize both a way of thinking about, uh, and a way of talking about the relations among perception body, gestures, language, and sense, and contains several insights which since then referenced my work uh, as a teacher and researcher. Beyond Merleau-Ponty, the study involved the references from works of Heidegger, McLuhan, Maturana, Wilhelm Flusser, Van der Belke, who is Brazilian, and Lawrence Marx, Ramachandran, some sight of which is also, and it's finally going to be published next year. Mm. In August uh, 2015, I was assigned a discipline named Fundamentals of Body Communication for undergraduate students. With no time to prepare a syllabus for that very same week, I started from my own research, and this gave me some weeks to search for other materials and teaching strategies. Overall, I would, uh, what I wanted is uh, the students to experience some of the notions proposed. I added some films and articles to foster discussion, and by the end of the semester, two dancers and choreographers Julia Salen and Juliana Gennari, who were my students, uh, helped me shape some exercises around the gesture concept proposed. Over busy, as usually we are, uh, we are not careful enough to register these first processes, something I greatly regret now. But I got excellent feedback from the students and developed a clear vision of a work that could be done about perception and gestures in a phenomenological philosophy inspired approach. One year later, assigned to the same discipline, I invited another ex student of mine, choreographer and dancer Camila Venturelli, who was in the picture, uh, opening picture, to collaborate proposing body practices for the students to experience the concepts. Uh, we also designed the structure of a written individual work requested for each student involving the relationship between body, gesture, sense, and meaning. Uh, and in this, the unity of the senses as a basis for semantics plays a key role. Okay, so let's go to the fun part. Uh, theoretical principles, some then might be polemical in a scientific uh, 
territory, but science versus experience. Uh, scientific explanations and models are great, but cannot give account of direct experience. Models cannot deal with the incommensurate uh, dimension of experience, and by no means the open certainty of experience can be replaced by the reductionist rationalized certainties of science. And by the way, one of the most inspired passages of uh, Richard Saitovich's book about the, the, the moment when uh, his patient is afraid of getting into the machine and be measured is just about this. I love this passage. Um, okay, second, uh, perception is an active relation between an organism and its environment through which this organism makes sense of its world. By defining things in a figure ground structure, figures emerge from a whole according to intentional biases of this organism in its circumstance. It enacts its world, as it's now called. Things are not objects, and their meaning depends on the whole from which uh, they emerge. Um, that which we refer to as word in which we experience living is an intersubjective agreement. Uh, we name that reality. Okay. Um, perception is biocultural. Although biologically circumscribed, human perception is collectively modulated by cultural biases. We are biocultural beings. In Western culture, visual bias has enormous privacy over the other body senses. There's a huge literature on that. Hmm. This is the coolest part on the, theoric, the theoretical principles. Uh, I guess, I believe this is quite original. Uh, to perform a gesture consummates a word. Well, to discuss the gesture of producing images, Willem Flusser uses the following terms. An image is a vision which is made fixed and intersubjective. It is a shared vision. So it is for any gesture. A gesture is the expression of an interior state shared with a community. What is named in cognitive science the perception action cycle can be understood as giving exteriority to a way of enacting a word. Uh, so Merleau-Ponty says that the gesture gives a human meaning to an object for the first time. Um, as such, a gesture is a statement of a way of perceiving. It emerges from the way a body makes sense of its word, and it states its own enactment of a word. Building a common, shared, intersubjective inter reality depends on sharing our interior perceptions with others. Thus, every gesture we perform at one, at the same time, it assigns meaning to the word, it's a taking position uh, towards the word, it is a sharing of the word one elects, and it is to perform in the becoming because once you act, your perception also changes. Um, since any figure ground relation depends on an observer, the gesture appears as such for an observer, of course, which may even be the agent of the gesture it's, uh, himself. So if I call this my gesture, it's a figure of a ground for me. So what is a gesture? Uh, for one agent uh, embedded in a circumstance, a gesture is a transcendence of the body towards the other because it's communication. Uh, it is thus a sharing of its word, it is a taking position towards the word, and it is to perform in the becoming, just like I said. But for a second agent embedded in the same circumstance, a gesture is a body figure over a body ground. So uh, this may be a gesture for you, but somebody else may be looking for that hand and see it as a gesture. So it depends on the observer, and it's a body figure over a body ground. That is, it is the observer who sees a gesture as such. Uh, for a third agent, a gesture is a communicative relation between two agents. 
And for a fourth agent, uh, what he sees is a cultural, an epistemological context based on tacit shared knowledge. Okay, let's move ahead. Uh, so what is a gesture still? The gesture can be interpreted in an axis that goes from biological to cultural, but they are not exclusive. Biological and cultural co-modulate each other. They are always embedded one with the other. Um, so towards Rudolf's Corporeal Semantics, which is an amazing book. Uh, speech is also a gesture. It's a power of the body. It depends on body physical limits. Also being essentially communication, it depends on there being more than one person. As Merleau-Ponty puts it, it's a transcendence towards the other. Uh, but it is a very particular gesture. It elevates us to a different word, which is the word of language. Uh, it takes with it, however, the whole body. Uh, as we know from several works, um, yes, from several works, um, Marx, Ramachandran, uh, and Hubert, and others, there are iconic relations between perceived things and language. Everybody knows Takete, Maluma, and Kikibuba effects here. Uh, Mark has brilliantly written about common dimensions of the senses, sight of which just quoted this, and also there's a recognized relation between music and dance, etc. Um, okay. So, thus, according to uh, Horst Rutroff's semiotics uh, in his fascinating book Semantics and the Body, meaning emerges from all body senses in a combination of what he names heterosemiotics and intersemiotic processes. Each word has its meaning defined by its appropriation by each of the body senses, heterosemiotics, and by the interplay of the senses, intersemiotic, meaning emerges from the way a biocultural body elevates itself to the transcendence of language without ever losing its cardinal dimension. So let's go to the way we worked it with the students. It's not possible to summarize here the subtleties involved in this approach to the relations between perception, gesture, and language. To experience the notions briefly presented um, and to be able to strengthen uh, students' abilities of observing their own gestures and the gestures of others, a series of practices have been proposed. First, uh, body exercise in which students should propose gestures, observe, observe gestures in the body of others, interpret the gestures um, using, for example, frames. These are Camila's pictures, amazing pictures, especially uh, they are looking for, this one is a great picture. Um, so also using card games that involve the relation between perception and language. Uh, observing their own gestures and proposing sealed words in the Kiki Buba style that could name them. So we have these amazing uh, known words uh, which were created naming the gestures in classroom. Um, finally, an individual work has been requested in which students should, departing from the proposed definition of gesture above, describe and name their own gestures as follows. Um, Along the duration of the course, departing from the theoretical framework proposed, observe, observe your own daily gestures, uh, register them, body, figure, over body, ground, and select 10 and assemble a glossary in this way. You have um, an exterior, this, uh, you have a picture above, you create a name for it, you make a, n a the most possible uh, description of the gesture, there's a D mi missing, <laughs> and then you make an inside description of the gesture, first physically, the tensions, the muscles, uh, what's going on inside your body, and an affective description, the feelings that you have when you do that gesture. Then create a line that represents it, like a Kiki Buba line, and, and assign a color to it. So these are a few examples of the examples, those, this is bupu and tea, 
and the line and the color. It's in Portuguese, there's no time to translate it all. Or then, uh, I think it's Tava, and the other is Ama, I guess. And the works are really fascinating. <laughs> so, let's go ahead. Um, conclusions, early conclusions. Uh, it's not clear yet where this process is going to take my understanding of the relations between body, perception, and language. The scope of both the theoretical framework and the experiential conclusions not only surpasses the time we have here, but it is still to be more formalized. However, it is clear to me that it opens amazing windows to interpret semantics in terms of its body groundings. Uh, thus, there's another gesture axis one can envision from the carnality of the body to the transcendence of language. So this is very uh, biological, but this is very cultural, and you have the you have verbal and on point, the body in the other, and the gestures just in the middle of this. Um, it is uh, in the course, um, sorry, in the first course during the workshop conducted by Julia and Juliana, I had the astonishing impression of being watching a draft version of the regions of language, gestures sharing perceived things which become intersubjective things and thus intersubjective gestures, thus language, thus culture. It was very impressive. And in the second semester, through the proposition of this kind of personal small glossary of one's own gestures, we observed the exceptional engagement of students and strong enhancement of the perception of oneself, one's own gestures, and the ability to notice and observe and ascribe meaning to minimum gestures of colleagues. Um, the proposed methodology of the glossary, although it is few, it's still very tentative, was simple enough for the student to engage in this observation of his, her own gestures, and at the same time allowed a way to circumscribe a multi-sensory dimension to one's body powers to communicate its word to others by connecting senses, body, inner feelings, abstract forms, and pseudo words, which would name each gesture one observes. Mm. The methodology was replicated at postgraduate level as also in a theater school, but the glossary has been reduced to five gestures only. The results, however, were equally surprising in an engagement of students equally intense. Uh, in no cases, students reported strong enhancement of the perception of themselves and the communicative powers of their bodies. Well, it remains a challenge for the next years to continue this work, looking for strategies to improve the methodology, improve the documentation of process without losing its deeply experiential character, and then develop new ways of interpreting such results in terms of a theory of the relations between gesture and meaning in a synesthetic key. That's it. And these were the last group of students we worked with. Thank you. I think we do have at least a little bit of progress here on the mic. It's working, right? I think we do have a little bit of time for questions, if, if there are some. Uh, hang on just a second. Can you send it to me? Hi, thank you for such a fascinating um, uh, presentation of such, uh, such an innovative um, that you devised. Um, I have so many questions, but one of them, I guess, is what, um, what, what were the kind of parameters you gave to the students for performing the gestures? And also at each stage of the kind of um, translation into a, a different modality, were there like parameters that you gave the students? Um. The whole process is still very 
open. So what I wanted uh, was them to get in touch with their own ways of making meaning, meaning of gestures and also uh, to devise the gestures because uh, you see, I'm talking to you and you may see this as a gesture, but maybe Anton is looking to me and he's seeing this as a gesture. So it depends on the way you look at it and the way the observer describes the phenomena, just like Humberto Maturana uh, used to, to say. So I wanted to enhance this attention to the question of gestures and, uh, and work in this uh, territory uh, between biological and cultural in a way that we have uh, semantics that is both uh, focused because we are trying to build this universe of multisensory associations that create meaning according to Rudrov and not to make that a kind of database correspondence that this gesture means this, then this means that. No, it's a more open semantics because semantics is contextual dependent. And because uh, Ruth Roth offers that semantics grounded on the body, uh, 